But anyway, convergence. So this idea of exponential growth, finally it did get some respect. We do have a, a, a poster child, actually from this city, um, Amazon. Boy, were, the, were we fighting battles back in the early 2000s as we were going through the tech and telecom bust and then coming out of it. Nobody believed that Amazon could grow revenues at a compound annual rate of 25% per year on average um, for 20 years. And we were fighting that battle and fighting that battle and fighting that battle, and it finally paid off. But boy, um, uh, back then, even when indexes weren't as powerful in terms of an attraction for investors, it was really hard to convince investors that we would see such exponential growth. Uh, well, we did, and, um, and, and uh, some people now do believe it's possible. What we are saying now is that we are going into a super exponential growth world because those five major innovation platforms around which we have centered our research and investing, they are converging. And so what we have are the equivalent, so all of you in the innovation world understand what an S-curve is, you know, start out slowly and then you get into the sweet spot. Well, what we have now are S-curves feeding S-curves. They're feeding each other, and we think creating explosive growth opportunities. Uh, and you can see that uh, from the purple here that AI, which touches almost every other um, technology on, on, on um, this sphere, um, that it is the major catalyst. We're uh, putting a paper out, um, I think it will be uh, later this month or de early December, on this concept of convergence. And um, Brett Winton, who's our chief futurist, uh, has actually analyzed um, which of the technologies are uh, the biggest catalysts for other technologies. It's a scoring system, which I definitely will not bore you with tonight. Uh, but you can see at the bottom there, it is, and you can also see from um, the depiction here, it is the most important of these technologies in terms of catalyzing other technologies. Um, which are the biggest beneficiaries of these technologies, these 14 technologies um, uh, uh, of this idea of convergence? We think it's autonomous taxi platforms. So autonomous taxi platforms uh, involve the convergence among three of the major, inter major innovation platforms. Robotics, um, autonomous vehicles are robots. Uh, energy storage, they will be electric as the, the learning curve associated with drivetrain technology plays out. And, uh, and electric vehicles become much uh, less expensive than gas-powered gas vehicles and uh, artificial intelligence. So three, robotics, um, uh, energy storage, and artificial intelligence. So let's talk about learning curves to get a sense of, of the drama here. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, in the, uh, I'll give you a few. Of the five major innovation platforms, there are some stunning learning curves evolving here. Um, if, you, if you look at um, industrial robots, the learning curve, so as, as George mentioned, Wright's Law, which is we've centered our research on Wright's Law, and the biggest surprise to me in the investment world period, not just in the public world, but in the private world, is that others are not doing this kind of analysis. Uh, most people in the public uh, investment world do not know what Wright's Law is. Wright's Law is a relative of Moore's Law. Moore's law is a function of time. Wright's law is a function of units. Now that the semiconductor world has slowed down in its cadence, it's kind of hitting a wall, uh, Wright's law is getting the semiconductor forecasts um, right, uh, 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 or is doing a better job at forecasting what's going on in the semiconductor world than Moore's law is. Wright's law says for every cumulative doubling in the number of units produced, costs decline, costs associated with each technology, 
uh, decline at a consistent percentage rate. So in the world of industrial robots, again, we've centered our research, we're doing this research, we give it away because we think there are such inefficiencies uh, in the investment world around innovation, definitely in the public marketplace. So what's the learning curve of industrial robots? 50%. Now this is why technology is extremely deflationary. We hear all this talk about inflation going on, and I just wrote a tweet, uh, just put up uh, the Bloomberg Commodity Price Index from 1980 to today. It hasn't gone anywhere. We're at the same place, and everybody's talking about it. So uh, I actually think, uh, for those of you who have studied economic history, that uh, we're probably closer to a chondroti of wave uh, uh, on the downside than most people understand right now, and helping it along are going to be all of these technologies. So that 50% decline in industrial robots. For drivetrain drive uh, battery pack system technology, that number is 28%. That's why Tesla can cut its prices and still be profitable. Uh, and I think the auto companies are baffled because they're saying, well, we can't produce these electric vehicles profitably, so we're not going to do that because their shareholders don't want them to do it. I don't know what's going to happen to them. Uh, all I know is this gives Tesla more room to run because the competitors are starting to, to back away. Um, in the uh, multi-omic sequencing space, or DNA speak, uh, sequencing specifically, uh, that learning curve is 40%. Again, a 40% drop in costs for every cumulative doubling in the number of whole human genomes sequenced. Um, and we're at a very low, low base, so we're going to see many cumulative doublings. Uh, and we're already down to $200 to $400 in DNA sequencing costs. Um, in, in the case of uh, artificial intelligence, um, we, we, uh, the, the data metric here to, to compute Wright's Law is it's a relative compute unit, and it involves a, 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 a metric involving data per compute unit. Um, for every cumulative doubling in that metric, costs decline by 48%. Now, the, the showstopper here, or the aha moment for us, was okay, we, we did that, but AI training costs, when you, you, when you combine both hardware and software, are dropping 70% per year. So what does that mean? The cumulative doubling is taking place in less than a year's time. That's why what's going on today is so provocative.